In this TA Tech Tip, we will show how to measure the rheology of an epoxy before, during, and after cure, all within one experiment. Samples that go through a curing reaction can be some of the most challenging to measure on the rheometer. Over the course of the test, the sample goes from a medium viscosity liquid to a rigid solid. The change in modulus can be very large and occurs over a short period of time. A small strain amplitude must be used to measure the cured material but it will give very poor resolution at the start of the test. This makes it difficult to measure the initial viscosity. This can be solved by using non-iterative sampling. This allows the strain to be adjusted to maintain a minimum torque. We will set the strain amplitude to 0.05%. Then we'll select non-iterative sampling and set a lower torque limit of one micronewton meter. At the beginning of the experiment, the viscosity is low. By using non-iterative sampling, the strain is increased to achieve the minimum torque, producing better data. As the sample becomes stiffer, a smaller strain can be used to achieve the minimum torque. The strain amplitude is incrementally decreased to the value we set in the procedure. Non-iterative sampling allows us to measure the viscosity of the uncured sample, the gel time, and the modulus of the cured material without having to do three different experiments. In this TA Tech Tip, we learned how to use non-iterative sampling to control the strain during a cure. Stay tuned for more TA Tech Tips to see why axial force control should also be used for this type of experiment. <laughs>